All right, hello world. In this video, I'm going to walk through Fef FE, which is a new Max for Live device that I've developed that does car plus strong type micro delays and feedback on an incoming audio signal. And you can set the threshold for the feedback to occur whenever the incoming audio sample surpasses a certain amount. So this slider and this visualizer here, which takes the incoming audio signal, is what you can use to sort of set a good level um, that's appropriate for the incoming audio. In this video, I just wanted to walk through a couple types of audio and a couple contexts that you might use this device in, show how the different controls work, and have some fun. So with that, let's get started. This first sample is me saying one, two, three, four, and I'm just gonna mess around with the controls and then sh walk through what they do afterwards. So here we go. One, two. All right, so going from left to right, I kind of mentioned threshold already, but essentially this controls the level at which anytime a sample goes above it, it will ping the feedback system with that sample and it will get added to the sort of whatever's looping around. Then frequency controls the length of the delay line. So up here, it's two samples in total length, which is a very small loop. And moving down to the lowest, it's four echoes per second. So there's quite a range here, but even at its slowest, it's still a pretty fast delay. And, um, you know, that's kind of the point is car plus strong type delays are more to emulate strings and um, a string can only wobble so slow. <laughs> so, Yep, there's quite a range here to explore and look for different tones, particularly up here before you get into the more kind of lower numbers here. Then there's feedback control up here. Feedback is all the way up. You'll hear basically something that sounds like a string. So just to play this for a second again. But if I turn it down, it won't echo, it won't feedback as much. So it kind of putters out and it's maybe more like a drum or a transient burst. Then there's a low pass filter. This controls the cutoff frequency of that filter on the output signal. And out is just the um, like main out from the device. Then there's wet, dry, wet blend and wet gain control to control the level of the wet signal independently. And then finally, there's a freeze toggle, which takes the current contents of the delay line and freezes it. So no audio from the incoming audio signal will get added and you'll just be able to sort of loop with the existing audio infinitely. Um, so to show how that works, so that can be really fun and you can freeze it and then mess around with the frequency and low pass filter and it will change the audio so do that too. So that's really fun. It's a fun little kind of like performative gestural type thing you can do with this. Um, inspired by the 2HP freeze, which is a Eurorack module. All right, um, I'm gonna move on to a different sample now. So this one has, it's a drum break, a break beat, and it has more transients in it. Kind of same as the first one, but just figured it'd be good to show more than one type of sample. Lastly, there is this field recording that doesn't have any transients in it, and I wanted to demo that because you'll see that the thrush control really um, had just how it works. So if we start going through this, you'll see that no sample in this file is playing 
it's no sample is larger than the threshold that we've set, so there's no audio output because it's fully wet right now. If we start to make it dry, then we hear some of the audio. It's because there's dry getting into the output. If we move threshold down, we'll start to hear it ping the feedback network. And I mentioned this just mainly because this device can be used to capture transients or it could be used as a sort of tonal modulator like in this context where you go below a certain threshold and then every sample um, will start to add to the feedback system. So those are different ways you could use it. A couple other things to note, you don't necessarily only have to use audio loops or samples as input here. You could use an LFO as input or like a contact microphone where you're snapping or making transients by hitting a table, for example, and every time it goes above whatever threshold you set, it will, you know, do the same thing. So it can be used um, with sort of maybe non-classic audio input. And finally, it this device really comes to life when you start to modulate the parameters. Um, otherwise, it's it you know it's a static feedback system, and so it will start to sound. I mean, it's still really really fun, but I think it really comes to life when you start to add like LFOs and randomness to it. So in this case, I'm going to just drop in an LFO and another LFO and change the rates a little bit, drop them onto some of these components here. And let's play this break and just see how it sounds. Awesome. It's really fun. Um, love this device. And it costs $3.69. It's available on my Gumroad page, which is linked in this video. Uh, 369, damn, you're fine. Thanks for watching. Bye.